It's the good time here. <laughs> it's always a good time. Try to make it that way in the mornings. And the Goodland Regional Medical Center School Spotlight on the air. Thank you to the Goodland Regional Medical Center. Visit goodlandregional.com. Stay up on all the events and uh, health fairs. Uh, now we've had that. Uh, there's a lot of other things the hospital has. Learn about the doctors. You can get on your patient website that you have that's strictly for you and uh, other calendar items. So uh, a great website, goodlandregional.com. With us today, Goodland School Superintendent Bill Beerman. Good morning and happy Friday. Good morning. Uh, great to be here. It's been a little while since our last visit, so um, time flies and, and here we are. Yes, my goodness, and what a busy, compact <laughs> Well, we got We have just a few things going on, especially on the activity front, uh, which is awesome because we're excited that, that we get these opportunities um, to host some of these uh, sub-state type of events. A lot of times we have to travel um, for those, and, and sometimes we have to travel a long ways for those events. And so um, we're excited to have those here this weekend. So, um, How do you apply for those? Um, at the end of the day, I think uh, Marty Lehman, our activities director, uh, every year you can submit you know, our willingness to host this, 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 and this, you know, whatever that is. I mean, I think almost probably every year we put in for basketball and volleyball and you know, different cross country, et cetera. You have to have a facility um, that can meet the minimum standards that Keisha has for that event. Um, so you have to include that in there. But so I think every year, pretty much, we kind of blanket it unless we know we have something else bigger or something coming up that we can't do it because um, we'd always want to host if can. Um, so uh, last year we were fortunate to get Substate basketball. I'm here, and this year we have now Substate Volleyball coming on Saturday. So Not not only does it make the school look good, and, and you get to show off again and show other students that maybe have never been here, mm -hmm. but it also uh, brings uh, money into the town. People eat, live, I mean, they eat and uh, stay all night, some of them. So Yeah, absolutely, and shop, like especially with the cross-country meet. Um, you know, that regional cross-country meet is 15 uh, different schools are coming to Goodland, and, and uh, that'll be a big event out there. And, and at a cross-country meet, you don't charge um, any admission gate. There's no fee to go to the cross-country meet, uh, and yet we have expenses. We have to pay a certified starter to start the race, et cetera. So, uh, but the benefit is our kids don't have to travel, and then the benefit is that you know Goodland benefits from having all these people here. And so we certainly recognize and appreciate that. So cross country starts at 10 o'clock out at Sugar Hills. If you want to go out and watch that, and it'll be a tomorrow beautiful day, almost too warm of a day, probably, honestly, end of October for a cross country meet. Kind of crazy, but um, yeah, that's tomorrow, Saturday. Good, good. Uh, a professional starter. Yeah, I know, because at the end of the day, Marty was going to have me do it, and he was like, oh, nope, Keisha Guidelines, we have to have a certified starter. And, got to pay for that person to come and <laughs> i know right like how much is it to a cross country meet but hey you know that's the way it goes and so we got to apply they just yell go yeah go everybody <laughs> run right how, like how hard is it uh, uh, ready set go i think run. every now and then there is if there is a kid that falls down in the first hundred meters or something like that they'll re blow the gun and restart it that yeah. type of thing well, i could still do that I could, oh somebody fell down stop, stop yeah then we pay for an automatic timing system to come in oh yeah oh know, now that i understand you know some of those things which keeps it cleaner and um everything and then that feeds automatically into a website you know that shows the results so um those types of things are nice to have but there's a cost associated with those but yeah um that's okay we're excited to have it we sure appreciate sugar hills allowing us again to run on the course for the event um, drove by yesterday. It looks, looks great. I don't know how, how it looks so great with how dry it's been, but they've done a great job. So, uh, they use, uh, I think APSA 80 from Amway. <laughs> Is that right? I'm yeah. sure, right? Yeah. Something has to keep it going. Yeah, so I've, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, uh, so we've got the, uh, cross country, yeah. but, uh, tonight we've got football. Yeah. So tonight's football here. It'll be our last home game of the year. Um, Hugotin comes to town, uh, also will be senior night, and I think there are some playoff implications there if we can pull off a win. Um, you know what that does for us a little bit. I think we do maybe get out of playoffs this year and, and then have a ninth game uh, yet to be determined exactly where that all, depending on all the scenarios that can happen tonight. So it uh, should be exciting. It's senior night. Um, not just for football. We'll recognize seniors that are participating in some other events for us at, as well. I'm sure that we're recognizing our state golfers tonight. I think Marty has that on the agenda. Uh, we are also tonight announcing our Kansas Teacher of the Year. Um, 
nominees this year at the football game tonight, just kind of recognizing the the profession a little bit on education. So um, those are all things that will be happening along with a great football game tonight. It should be uh, beautiful weather for that as well, especially yeah. um, late October. <laughs> Oh my, yeah, because you know, it'll, be, it'll be really nice. You never know what's going to happen in October, but yeah. so far, uh, we're doing all right. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, students, uh, have we been doing some testing and um, throughout the different grade levels? Well, we we do. Well, we we kind of have three points in the year, I guess. We kind of do a fall, winter, and spring um, assessment ourselves internally. This has nothing to do with state assessments. Um, those are always in March or whatever. So. We kind of always do that. Uh, we've done those. That kind of helps us work with what we call our wind groups and literacy groups and different things. Uh, just identify what are the kids' needs and, and where do we need to put them in some groupings that we can do. So we're kind of teaching phonics to a group of kids that need phonics, et cetera. So um, that in-house assessment and testing, uh, we've completed and we have that going. Uh, we also do what's called interim assessments. Uh, which are just kind of a snapshot a little bit for like our math. I'll use math, but it can go to all the core areas. So our math teachers kind of know. Um, it's kind of a, a t- tries to project a little bit how the kids will perform on the state math assessment. So let's say fifth grade math. Um, we kind of can give a little interim assessment, kind of has some questions related to that. Um, and then you can kind of get a little dipstick, if you want to call it, on how, how are we doing. A lot of times what we use that for a lot is um, – you know, almost scope and sequence a little bit. What what have we taught? What have we still not taught? What do we need to make sure we teach in order for, for our kids to be successful and to prepare them for what they need to do? So um, that's ongoing throughout the year as well. So We knew uh, in Gardner years ago when we were the big tests were going on, our superintendent, Mr. Perry, would, would stand behind the class and watch for a little bit and wouldn't say a word. Uh-huh. He'd, he'd sneak in. Uh, not sneak in. We knew he was yeah. in. And uh, watch for a little bit, and he'd go back out. So we knew those, you better answer right. Just to try to bring some seriousness <laughs> to it, huh? Well, it was, yeah, and it was <laughs> it was kind of cool. To, you know, it, it's a... Uh, it's, it's an interesting balance, I think, you know, and the pendulum continues to swing back and forth a little bit. Uh, there for a while in the No Child Left Behind era and stuff like that, so much emphasis was on state assessments and and probably too much. Um, and then the pendulum swung kind of the other way a little bit, and, and we de-emphasized those, um, which is fine and understandable too. And now, honestly, the pendulum is swinging back, and it seems like a big lens is being placed on those state assessments again. Um, I don't know that that's driven so much internally by us locally. Um, we, we find value in it's good to know where you are, and but we certainly don't want that to be the end all for everything that we do in schools. Um, a lot of that, honestly, is pushed by outside agendas and outside media that, that want to use those scores to, to – make it sound like you're not doing a good job or whatever. Um, and so that's just where the balance is. And, and that pressure, of that almost forces you to put emphasis on it, even if you're trying to de-emphasize it a, a little bit, if that makes sense. So um, I think that's kind of where we're at in the conversations we're dealing with this year is how much focus do we want um, with outside pressures? Um, you know, there's certainly some things we feel like we do better than just state assessments. But if, if that's the – um, earmark that everybody's going to point to and look at for success, then then I guess we'll have to go that way a little bit. So Okay, very good. And you're always reviewing all this to see what we can do better and, and what do we need to refine. Yeah, our teachers do a great job. You know, almost probably weekly they're looking at their data and, and analyzing how our kids are doing and what, what we need to be doing better and, and what we need to be spending more attent- time on, um, et cetera. So that's almost a weekly event in our schools. Our, our teachers do a great job collaborating on that. Fox News reported today they were talking about uh, high absenteeism rates in some schools um, across the country. And uh, some said that some of the kids are gone so much they lose about uh, 10% of their um, their hours in school. Uh, maybe about, they said f- they figure out about a month that they lose because we have a lot of absenteeism. Is that an issue in uh, the Goodland schools? It is. Um, I wish it wasn't, but it is. Um we, we, we define that as chronic absenteeism, right? So um, we've had, you know, I, I think we had a little bit of that issue uh, pre-COVID with, with a few few students here and there that uh, I guess however you want to define don't find value in, in, in that education piece of that. Um, 
COVID obviously happened, and now it's been even harder to, to emphasize the importance of your child being at school every day, right? And on time, right? Um, and not just so much, Curtis, because of the um, law. I, I mean, yes, the loss of the academic piece over time certainly mounts. Um, and, and I think that's where some parents and, and uh, kids don't, don't understand. Yeah, it's this day, it's that day, but all of a sudden it becomes a habit. It's habitual. And so that's where I was as a third grader, fourth grader, fifth grader. And then why, then I wonder why I'm behind my peers, right? I, I wonder why I'm not on grade level. Um, and it's really hard for our teachers when so much emphasis is on grade level, um, getting a student to grade level when they're not in the classroom. It makes it really hard. But the other piece of that is um, just the life skill um, that we're losing with that. Um, you know, I, I, you don't want to get up to go to work every day, like right? Or, or I mean, maybe you do. Maybe your job, you love your job that much. Hopefully we all have jobs where every day we wake up, we love to go to. There are days where it's like, oh, but the reality is I have to. I have to get up. I have to be there on time. People are counting on me. Um, I think that's the thing you worry about too. Sometimes with this chronic absenteeism and the what what the structure of schools can do for that life skill of, you know, especially for a high school student a little bit, middle school, high school. Yes, I've got to get up. I've got to be there. I've got to be there for a specific time. Um, that 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 life component characteristic moving forward for the next forty years, um, I think, is something we need to be concerned about. Okay, excellent. I was wondering about that when I had heard it. The uh, school, um, I know the U.S. Department of Agriculture working to get some new kitchen equipment for schools. Uh, do we need new kitchen equipment? Uh, well, I certainly look at that. I didn't. I haven't heard of this, but I, uh, most of our kitchens are in pretty good shape, but we always have something going out here or there, even though in the bond project we replaced quite a bit. But, you know, you're looking at nine-year-old equipment now, and we didn't replace every feature, so... You'll have to pass that on to me if there's opportunities to get some new yeah. equipment. USDA, they've got some grants or okay. some funding for that, yeah. so you might want to uh, at least look into that. It might need a – Because you know, even though, um, like my wife told me the other day, our refrigerator's going out, and I'm just like, oh, gosh, mm. because I know how much stuff's costing these days and how hard it is to get stuff. But um, that industrial type of stuff, you know, to get an industrial refrigerator or still or oven like we have in our kitchens in our schools is really some high dollar stuff. So um, if there's something out there, I'd certainly appreciate looking into that. So, sure. And I think yeah. other schools, too, just as a, a heads up on that part. How are we doing uh, teacher wise? Have you had a lot of substitute teachers apply? Do we need more? Well, we always need more. So this is an ongoing conversation, right? So uh uh, we certainly try to just do the best we can with what we have. That's all we can do, right? But um, if anyone's out there wants to be a substitute teacher, we'd love to have you. Uh, pays up over a hundred dollars a day. Um, I think it's a very rewarding thing. Um, I think you can watch a movie or hear horror stories, and people think I don't want to substitute. I actually think it's if you talk to some of our current substitutes, I think they find find that it's a really rewarding job most most days, and so. Um, certainly would advocate for that. We, we de are in desperate needs of bus drivers. Uh, Mr. Lehman and, and myself have driven way too many activity buses already this year. Um, and, uh, and that's fine. We'll step in and do what we can and need to help to keep things moving. Justin Doddle, my transportation director. Um, I don't think he's hardly in the role of transportation director. He's always driving bus, filling in for somebody. So, um, we just need 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 those people desperately need need bus drivers and substitutes. Those are the big ones. Um, we'll always take applications on paras, custodials, et cetera, all, all the pieces of the puzzle. But um, bus driver substitutes are at a high high need. Um, the teaching front. We just interviewed a candidate yesterday. So that type of season, that type of um, always talking to teachers that are out there is something that's almost become ongoing uh, because you just know that. They're, they're not a lot out there, so you're doing the best you can with that. So um, I've been to several job fairs on college campuses. I'm trying to make connections with kids, et cetera. So um, just doing the best we can, can continue to do on that. I've noticed something at the Northwest Tech College that some of the instructors are uh, former students that have gone through the college and maybe added to their education, and now they're back um, doing some teaching. 
Yeah, so we certainly welcome that. I think we've got a couple potentials of those out there right now at the moment that um, we certainly are excited about and talking to um, in regards to employment in our district. Um, and, and I'm excited about that. Uh, uh, when we can bring back some of our own, um, um, that's a good thing. Um, it's always nice when they can maybe go get, see what the world has to offer, see see how somebody else do it, does it, and then bring those experiences back. Um, but the job market right now dictates we'll take you right out of college. Um, and that's a good thing. And uh, we certainly welcome that. And we're excited, Curtis. I'd like to announce or say some of the names on that, but I probably shouldn't. So I won't. I'll just tell you I think we're excited about a couple of our uh, kids that are certainly probably going to be hopefully with us um, in the next couple of years as we look to fill some spots. Wonderful. That's yeah. good news. St- uh, learn local, teach local. Yeah, very good. Well, they know <laughs> our school. They know our community. Yeah. They know um, all those things that so, so are so important to us. So Good news. Good news. You were talking about needing uh, bus drivers and substitutes and, and custodial. What about referees? Are we still short ba- like basketball referees? Yeah, that's referees? all going to. Um, yeah, and the and the and it's bad now, and the and the worst part of that, and why you keep hearing us, the schools and and across the state, across the nation, talking about it, it's it's what's 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 it look like in five years? Because there's so you watch crews now, there's so many of them that are getting up there in age that you know are just gonna quit, retire, et cetera, and who who's there to fill those spots? And so, um, it's it's really tough. I just wish. We could be better when we come support our kids in activities to have some understanding. I, I always tell some parents just, hey, realize when you come to the basketball game, whatever it is, there's going to be a bad call. Like you, you just have to almost prepare yourself that you know that. So when the moment comes, like we're not just screaming and yelling and making it personal. They're, they're humans. They're going to make mistakes. And if we continue to run them off, um, our students' ability to have meaningful activities is going to be limited because we don't have anybody – that wants to do that. And and that can be a very rewarding uh, profession as well, or a side job. I officiated a lot when I was coming through college and, and even in school. So I enjoy doing it because I enjoy being out there with kids. Um, and we just need to make sure we're aware of that. Did you ever have to stop a game and point at a, a parent or Yeah, or unfortunately, I've had, I've had the opportunity um, to stop a basketball game and, and exit a parent. And um, and I, I feel like when I was a basketball official that, that I, I don't really hear much, right? So um, you're really fo- uh, in a gym, it's pretty loud. And so to get an official's attention to make them stop an event, t- to basically say, you're, you, that's enough, you're out of here, um, you've done a lot to get to that point. And, um, and, and, that, and that's disturbing. And, and for a lot of, I, I could maybe handle that. It wasn't that big of a deal to me. I understand those things can happen. Uh, but for some young officials, then that, that's enough to tell them, I don't want to do this anymore, right? And and, and we, we, we just need to be better about that. Good point. Let's switch gears and uh, talk about the school board, the guidance. They continue to uh, look at a lot of things. They control it all. Yeah, right. So we, we have a board meeting coming up. Like we meet every second and fourth um, Monday of the month, um, unless something arises. Um, certainly those are public public uh, meetings, Uh we rarely have anybody there, but we welcome all. Uh, uh, I think really, our, you don't have many people. You no, know, we don't. I know that surprises you, but no, we don't usually have very many people um, in the audience, right? So, um, and I don't know. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that things, for the most part, things are going well. I don't know how to perceive that, but um, yeah, most of the time those are at high, at at, uh, at central still. Um, every now and then, if we know we're going to have a big group of people, because maybe more mainly because we're recognizing a big group or something, we'll move it to the high school library. We try to get information out on that. But for the most part, those are just a central upstairs. Um, we are re- looking at repurposing a room to kind of create back to a boardroom. We've kind of lost our boardroom when we expanded our pre-K um, services down in the bottom. But uh, I think we've got a plan coming coming to help with that but. okay uh and one comment and then i want to talk about the front lobby renovation of the max those windows at uh, the old central school really look nice well thank you you know that project obviously has been ongoing for a year now um where we were able to um with some of the esser dollars that we received getting you know central did not have a hvac central hvac system in um so uh, you know, with clean air and refreshing air quality and some of those things that, that you need in schools, we were able to get get that. Along with that project, we are replacing all the windows. They're just making an efficient building. 
um, that old glass block um, probably wasn't the most efficient. And then even the little bit of windows we did have outside of that were single pane. So it was a really inefficient window. And if you're going to upgrade an HVAC system to today's standards to have then it all leak and everything just doesn't make too much sense. So, um, but we also wanted to keep the integrity of the building and everything that it has. So, um, I'm excited about it. I know many people would drive by and, well, I don't like the color that we painted or, or why are we, um, are they replacing the windows? I hope though, cause they painted over the windows, you know? So, um, but it's coming together really good. I, I like it. We're finally getting the end is in sight. I was nervous because the windows were supposed to come in, the, in, in May. So it was supposed to be a summer project. And then it was August and it was September. And then you just, holy cow, we can't be doing this in the middle of winter. Uh, we've been blessed with great weather here again. Um, so hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we'll wrap up that project. And yeah. I'm excited, really. Um, the whole front, the lobby area, you know, where they covered up some of the glass, to obviously single pane, to probably an efficiency issue, will be repurposed to all windows again. And that's such a large, you know, um, two-story spot there at the beginning. Uh, when the glass all goes in there, I think that's going to really – kind of be a wow that looks really incredible there too so um, it's a great investment in a building on main street in our community that we hope the school district can continue to operate you know for the next 40 years whatever right um, so there was a little investment in that building that needed to be done and we are happy to do that you bet good stuff well uh, i think we've covered everything did we cover everything you had we've i think it. we talked a lot about all the activities but i don't think i really mentioned that we do have substate volleyball here as well on saturday oh why um yeah yeah at one o'clock and in, in our girls should have a really good shot but yet it'll it's all it's a substate and if you lose you go home so um we need a raucous boisterous you know crowd there bring out all your black and gold come and join it they're fun to watch and um go watch our cost country kids support them at 10 and then come in and and, and uh, get going at one o'clock mountain time at the Max Jones. Hopefully they'll have three matches and punch their ticket um, to their third straight um, state tournament for the volleyball team. So. I know Ross Volkmer was in earlier this morning, said that uh, we on KKCI, he's going to have it live on the air starting about uh, 12.50, uh-huh. 12.45, awesome. and follow back and forth throughout the day. And um, good luck. It's going to be good. It's nice to have all these schools in town. It is. It, it brings a lot to our community, and so we're excited to host them. Outstanding. Well, thank you for being with us. Um, uh, you've got a busy schedule, and it always gets busier as we get into the fall months. We've got the uh, holiday programs and Christmas programs and uh, concerts and vocal and instrumental. Very it's, busy. Yeah. <laughs> always. Yeah. Always something going on, which That's is it. good. That's it. What's the school calendar? Uh, what's the website there? Uh, www.usd352.org. Outstanding. Lots of information there. Well, thank you. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Curtis. You're welcome. Goodland School Superintendent Bill Beerman, our guest on the Goodland Regional Medical Center Spotlight. And for updates, as you heard uh, Mr. Beerman talk about the Goodland School website, also for the Goodland Regional Medical Center, visit their website at goodlandregional.com. See what's going on at the hospital and learn about your care provider and the different schedules that they have for different doctors and um, uh, technicians coming in from other areas every month. GoodlandRegional.com.